Welcome to the Crystal Starn Show with your host, Crystal Starns. Today, we have a fabulous guest that's coming on the show. He once was a childhood actor, and he now is a singer, songwriter, and music artist. His name is Terry Lawrence. Let's welcome Terry Lawrence to the show. Hi, Terry. How are you? Hi, Crystal. Very good. Good to see every, you and everybody out there. Yes. Well, I'm so happy you decided to come on the show. I'm excited to hear more about, about you and your background and everything that you're doing now. And I'm sure the audience would love to learn more about you as well. Um, you're an icon, you know, the fact that you were in movies and everything as a child, and now you're into music. I just want to hear all about it. So maybe just start off with telling a little bit about who you are and your background. Sure. Sounds good. Glad to be here. Uh, yes, I started out uh, when I was about four and a half years old. Uh, I was doing some modeling for Catalina Sportswear, going into the Ambassador Hotel with a group of different kids. They could have been child actors or, or modelers at that time. I was just modeling for them. And I come, come, come down the runway doing my uh, modeling of this outfit and everything. And then somebody gave my mom a card and said, listen, you want to give uh, an agent a call, this Hazel McMillan. She was about 70 years old at the time. And she, it turns out that uh, we got the card and she was one of the uh, top agents for all these actors back then, uh, uh, Jerry Mathers of the Beaver, James Cagney's son, and all these people. So I started getting into uh, the field that way. My first movie, actually, it was a uh, television show with uh, uh, The Millionaire, where John W. Tipton passed out these checks to people for a million dollars to the door, you know, probably like Publisher's Clearinghouse. But uh, I was in an orphanage. They passed out a check in an orphanage. So that was the first thing I, I did, the very first thing. So I, I got into acting field with, with that, and, I, and then I progressed from there. So uh, that's how I got into it. That's awesome. Thank was you, you ever in any like movies that we might know about? Yes. Yes, I was in a couple. Uh, I, first, I did a couple of commercials after that. And I, I did the Eddie Fisher show live. Uh, and uh, I was in a movie called Dance with the Henry in 1956 with Adam and Lou Costello. And uh, it's still, you can still see it on YouTube and, and it was a good movie. I was, it was an amusement park with uh, these uh, gang of kids that were uh, uh, there uh, chasing cops and robbers uh, uh, in the movie through the amusement park. There were midgets, all kinds of things going on. Abbott Luca Costello had some problems with these uh, uh, criminals and they were running around the park and everybody was chasing them. And I was a kid with a frying pan hit, hitting uh, some of the cops and robbers and everything. Rusty Hamer from Make Room for Daddy uh, with Danny Thomas was in the movie too. I, of course, I didn't know who he was at the time, but both of us were in the movie. And it was a cute little movie. I mean, you can still watch it uh, on there. And then I also was in uh, Trooper Hook a couple of, uh, uh, a year after that, I think, with Barbara Stammick and Joe McRae, Earl Holliman, Edward Andrews. That movie plays, has been playing for the last 50 years, and now it's colorized. You can see it's on YouTube. It's been on the Western Channel. Uh, I was a little Indian boy in that movie, and uh, they flew us out to Kanab, Utah. I had to learn lines, uh, Indian lines, and we did two weeks out there, beautiful setting and everything, and uh, on location. And uh, geez, they, the limousine drove us out to the desert to do some of the filming and everything there. And beautiful, beautiful with the plateaus, the mountains and the colored rocks and everything. And uh, so we did two weeks of that. And then we flew back to L.A. and did the other part on the Gunsmoke set with James Arness, who uh, we met and, and Hoplon Cassidy was on the set too. And a bunch of other people, Angie Dickinson. I took a picture. I was sitting on her lap. I mean, even when I was six years old, I mean, Oh, wow. OK. <laughs> Angie Dickinson. And, you know, back then. So anyway, um, we did the rest of the filming there and Gene Autry's Ranch. So that was a good uh, movie setting. A good movie's been very well known. They sell mugs and, and banners and stuff on eBay. Very, everybody knows that movie. I'm little, in black and white. It was. But now it's colorized. And I'm the little Indian boy on there. Uh, Barbara Stanwyck's son. Uh, you, the story goes that uh, she was attacked by the Indians and, and uh, uh, Acosta, Rudolph Acosta uh, was a famous actor. He was uh, my father uh, and he was looking for me and trying to go after the stagecoach and trying to get us back and everything. And, and the trooper hook is fighting against uh, 
against him. And it's a good movie. People should check that out. I was also on the Lone Ranger episode, Miss Aggie's Law or Miss Aggie and the Law. And I was a little uh, chip on there. That's on uh, on uh, the uh, YouTube. And also you can see that on one of the TV channels. It's an episode there. So uh, we we're going across the uh, uh, desert and uh, in that movie. And my father gets killed with an Indian arrow. And then 30 years later, they kidnap me and, and the mother's recanting the story. 30 years later, I'm a grown-up Indian. They finally meet and everything. So they can see that movie. And uh, there's other things that I did in the movie industry, which were um, Laura Scudder's peanut butter commercial. I did a Cracker Jack commercial with Johnny Crawford and Jay North in 59. I did uh, Art Link Letter Show commercials with Pillsbury Biscuits, Franco American Spaghetti. Uh, we met a lot of stars, a lot of entertainers. I'll let you ask the questions. I, I went on, rambled and everything. but No, no, it's okay. No, I, I'm, I'm listening. I'm, I'm learning. So <laughs> I'm enjoying hearing what you're having to say. So oh, very you're, cool. You're fine. Yeah, I think All it's right. awesome. What made you get into the music industry? Was well, that anyone that inspired you or? Well, while I was uh, doing the acting, when I started out in the movies when I was six, my parents also wanted to get me a piano. And what they did was we went down to uh, San Fernando Valley and there's this guy demonstrating an organ. So I wanted to get that instead. So they said, okay. So my parents said, okay, we'll get you that. With the movie that I made, we paid, I think it was $700 or something for the organ. So we got that. All along I was doing movies, I was also taking organ lessons. I had an ear for music before I took organ lessons. Uh, so I started learning and everything. So I had organ and piano lessons for a while, for about three or four years. Uh, and uh, then the Beatles came out, surf music, and I grabbed a guitar and I learned guitar. And I started playing in bands and stuff like that. Uh, uh, so I guess after about two years, I went back to keyboards playing. I was in a group with uh, two English guys from Coventry, England. We were making recordings in Hollywood Boulevard. Uh, with El Dorado Records, and we they were originals, and uh, it was a good band, and we played uh, uh, Palm Desert and different places back in '66. Very good group, uh, kind of sound like the Beatles and and the Hollies and everything. So, um, I mean, I was only about 16 when I was doing that, and uh, then it progressed into different groups. I got into R&B and Motown. I started doing Smokey Robinson and uh, different types of harmony and singing and stuff like that with different groups. And we ran into Bill Medley, the Righteous Brothers in a group, and he ended up managing us, took us into Vegas, into the Rat Pack Lounge, this group I was call in called Scandal. We were playing opposite Louis Prima, Sam Buter and the Witnesses. And I know, you know, Louis Prima was married to Keeley Smith, but at that time, Keeley wasn't performing with him. But it was in that Rat Pack Lounge that his group was very well known. And we got to play opposite them. And from there, we ended up leaving after a month and going on tour and uh, going to Miami and uh, Reno and playing opposite Ike and Tina Turner, Little Richard. But even if I back up about a year before that, I was playing at the Cinnamon Cinder Club back uh, working with Tina Turner and Ike and Dick and Dee Dee and Bo Diddley and the Sorrells and the uh, Coasters, uh, Donnie Brooks, Darlene Love of the Blossoms, all these people we were playing with them. So we got a lot of Motown and artists and different people we were playing with and backing with and sharing the stage with over the years. It was it was a great time, fabulous time, exciting, playing in Hollywood, playing. Uh, uh, I was in a group. We auditioned and we got the job for that movie or the uh, TV series Peyton Place. And uh, we were going to start playing uh, every week as the band, house band on Peyton Place on TV when it was brand new with uh, um, who is the uh, wife, Mia Farrow of uh, Frank Sinatra. So she was in that movie. Anyway, we were going to start playing. Then all of a sudden, we got a call that we're not going to be playing. I said, well, what, what happened? Well, Mickey Rooney made a phone call to 20th Century or uh, the, the station or something, Fox Studios, and said, I want my nephew's band to play on there. So we got bounced, and his nephew's band got to be the band. So anyway, regardless of that, we left that behind, and we kept progressing. And Anyway, for I was doing the music thing and everything. And so uh, I guess back uh, after the uh, touring and everything, I kind of left music for a while uh, and went into the garment industry working for my father, who had the second biggest pleading company in the West Coast. 
So we worked for him, met my spouse uh, through there, got married. And then after about three or four years, I went back into music. I got the, in the best uh, show group in Vegas. I was playing there for years, a disco show group and playing, got back to recording again. And uh, then disco came in and kind of phased out. So, you know, I've got my degrees in electronics and I went back to school, but then always doing music and everything. I got back into it about 10 years ago as a, well, no, actually 20. But 10 years ago, I started my own career uh, recording myself as an artist, playing and singing, doing covers, doing some originals and stuff, uh, doing Spotify and uh, uh, had a lot of success with my own albums uh, internationally. And my records, I've got five albums out. So I've been doing on, you know, Spotify, uh, iTunes, uh, YouTube and everything. I'm on all those digital channels. So I've been singing doo-wop, uh, R&B, uh, some jazz standards, uh, some rock and roll, different types of music. I, I cover it all. So I'm still playing and still doing all that. That's awesome. Right. Where can people find you? Like where can, like we look you up and like what website? Uh, one of my websites is terrylawrencemusic.com. I don't have any videos on there right now, but I have everything else. They can reach me for uh, if uh, uh, work or, or my songs or anything. I'm on YouTube, all my uh, five albums you can, you can listen to. Uh, if they want to purchase my albums, I'm on iTunes. I'm on Spotify. I'm on Napster 2. I'm on Amazon.com and Pandora. So they can find me there. I'm also on Reverb Nation, Terry Lawrence, Reverb Nation. They can see a lot of songs and my, my things. I, I did the House of Blues a couple of years ago. They can see a, a thing. I was in a group, uh, Blues Gone South on that. But they can listen to all my songs on, on all that uh, things. So they can find me. I'm, I'm on all the uh, digital stores. They can see my acting on YouTube. I'm all plastered all over there. So it's all there. Oh, good. Yes. Um, is there um, like is there any songs like some of the songs that you wrote and you sang? Is there any that like provide a meaning or like anything that you want to talk about? Like you know, because sometimes some songs that you like people write they there's a meaning behind it. Well, um, I've done a couple country tunes uh, that were original by Scott Sharp. They they turned out pretty good. I got some platinum and gold on Internet uh, America uh, Airplay Express. Uh, and I've downloaded a lot of tunes uh, of salsas and different things also uh, internationally from Japan, uh, Germany and, and different things. So there's a streaming and everything. Um, I'd say one of my favorite tunes back in 62, Brian Hyland had Sealed with a Kiss. That's one of my favorite tunes. Uh, the music and everything that we did, it came out really good. That, that, that I liked. Uh, I doubled my voice on that. I also did Since I Don't Have You by the Skyliners. That one turned out good. Uh, I just recently came up with uh, Cry to Me by Solomon Burke, uh, recorded originally in 1964. And that guy was a hard act to follow. Great uh, singer, inflections, uh, great vocals and everything. So we took that song uh, as a, a little slower uh, Motown R&B type tune, and we made a little bit of a rock uh, R&B type thing out of it so it's uplifted I'm a little higher in the vo vocal range and it turned I just recorded that that's off my fifth album Terry Lawrence classic hits you can find on uh, all those digital stores uh, Spotify internet Pandora uh, on the uh, all that stuff Amazon so I would say uh, Chapel of Dreams uh, is uh, one of my one of my good tunes that is good and fortune teller done in Canada originally by Bobby Curtola. Uh, somebody suggested that I do a song. Uh, so I did that tune, uh, a girlfriend of mine. And uh, I did that. That came out. I liked it. It was pretty happy with it. And I I have other tunes that I've done that have been medleys like um, soul Motown medleys like love songs medleys with the uh, 60s tears on my pillow. Uh, I don't have plans and schemes and just, just a medley of tunes that came out good. That was off my first album. So there's a lot of wide variety. I mean, I've done stuff by the casinos. Uh, then you can tell me goodbye. I've done uh, some Frank Sinatra uh, uh, a tune that was uh, not New York. New. I do that. I do a lot of Bobby Darren and Frank Sinatra stuff when I'm performing live at the lounges and the casinos and stuff. But um, let's see, which one was that? That was... Uh, My way. 
it was a it was an updated version of it. Boy, that was a long one. I was trying to think of some of the Frank Sinatra tunes and everything. But anyway, that, that turned out good. And there's a lot of tunes, a lot of a lot of tunes. There's probably about 45, 50 tunes that I did five, five albums to cover. And I've got more coming out and I'm getting some original tunes. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> You've done a lot. <laughs> I can tell that you have like you could probably talk for hours. <laughs> oh, like, for sure. Yeah, I'm sure I can guarantee it. I um, yeah. yeah, so you're an inspiration for future artists out there. There's no doubt, you know, Thank in my you. mind, even actors as well. With that being said, is there any advice you can give to actors or music artists that are trying to get into the field? I would so I'd say find out your greatest strength what you like to do, what you feel comfortable with doing, study it a little bit, get into it, check out the avenues to take, when you, whether it's music, whether it's acting or vocals or anything, and hone your craft. Do good, believe in yourself, and go with your gut and don't quit. Keep going. Get into it and progress. Just keep going and you, you, you could be a success. If you, whatever the mind can conceive it can achieve that's the old expression right right so yeah just roll with your feelings and, and what you have a gift your gift that you feel that you can do the best that people have commented and given you feedback hey you do this good hey i think you should and then if you really feel inside that you can do this whatever you do in life whether it's horseback riding whether it's swimming or music or whatever just go with it and take one day at a time relax breathe just enjoy your life and do what you feel you do best and what you like to do and just keep going with it. Don't quit. That's what I would, that's the advice I'd give. That's what I try to do. Right. I think that's great advice. All right. Um, is there anything else that you would like to tell the audience? Um, you know, anything I missed on asking you? Uh, I would, I would just like to say that, uh, you know, you, I uh, hope you, everybody keeps listening to my music and you can find me internationally. You can find me in all these stores. You can download my music. Um, I'd like to say that I appreciate, uh, the time talking to everybody, you, you and everybody, Crystal, and, uh, I hope you enjoy my music and I hope that, uh, everybody has a great, uh, summer coming up here. I know the weather, weather is really crazy in different areas of the world right now, especially the United States. But uh, I hope that everybody has a fantastic year and uh, we can continue on and pursue our dreams and everything and that uh, everything works out great for everybody. I hope the best for everybody. That's that's what I'd like to say. Thank you. And I am right now, I'd like to play one of your songs, um, Chapel of Dreams. Okay. Okay. So, so for Thank now, you. we're, you're welcome. We're going to listen to the Chapel of Dreams song. From Terry Lawrence. All right, Crystal, thank you. You're welcome. In the chapel of Chapel of Dreams There's a dream there for you Through the dark of the night Though as strange as it seems It 
is heaven to know just what happiness means. It is found at the door in the chapel of dreams. Chapel of dreams. Chapel.